Hello, welcome to this series on Haiti as the A to Z of language thesis for A-level English literature. This is going to be a series of videos that explores the different language devices or thesis that you would be expected to analyse while studying for an English literature A-level. They are going to be categorised alphabetically and there is a different video for each category looking at the type of language thesis for that letter, what they are in simple terms and what sort of things you would be looking to analyse them for as part of your English literature study. We're going to be doing this because both of the major awarding bodies, both AQA and Pearson that used to be known as ZXL, list in their assessment objectives the ways in which you need to analyse the text. AO2 for both of the awarding bodies, and you can find these details on their respective websites, ask you to analyse ways in which meanings are shaped in literary texts, and both of them use that terminology. On the right hand side of your screen at the moment, you'll see two images of artists working with clay. The reason we have these images is to remind you that literature is an art form, and the work that goes into it is purposeful, selected and done so with a meaning in mind. Now, there's often this concept of what the author intended versus what the English teacher is telling you what they are going to say. That might be true. For 95% of the book, the author might be writing their story. They might purposefully choose a word here or there that has an impact that they are wanting to stress. They are wanting you to pick up on it. The point is, regardless of whether you, they did it for 95% of their text or for all of it, you need to be able to pick out the language features and analyse them. In the old spec, it used to be referred to as language form and structure. And this looks at the different choices that authors have to produce their meaning. The meanings will be different depending on the type of text, when it was written, who was writing it but definitely the method that has been used. In the top image, you have someone crafting it with their bare hands and in the bottom, using a tool. Whether it's the form of being a sonnet or a piece of blank verse, each of those forms allows for a different value to be assessed. And that is your job. You have to match the language devices, the form features or the structural scenario that is going to have its impact in relation to the individual question and text that you are studying. And it is a big ask. AO2 and AO1 are both worth more than any of the other assessment objectives for each awarding body, which is why these videos exist to guide you through a variety of language features that are going to help you understand and get to the higher grades. One thing that's worth mentioning here is that if it's a simile, which you have been doing since primary school, or whether it's an AFRA that you might have been introduced at GCSE, or it's maybe even peripherous that you're not familiar with yet. Each of those features, if analysed well, will get you the higher grade marks. It doesn't matter that a simile has been around with you since the beginning of your learning journey, or whether you've only just learned the term. The focus for these videos is not to see how much you can remember at any given time. It is about your ability to analyse those features and get the meaning that the author is communicating. Because again, in both of those awarding bodies, they're asking you to analyse the ways in which meanings are shaped. They are not asking you to identify. They're not asking you to recall. They're asking you to analyse. You need to know what they are. You need to be able to name them accurately, that comes under AO1, but your analysis of those language features is absolutely paramount. The videos I'm hoping are going to support your development in these areas. It's really quite key that you understand feature spotting, as it is known, will get you nowhere. The analysis is the most important part. If you haven't done so already, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel so that you can find these videos easily. Maybe even pass them on to other people that you know would benefit from these at either your friendship base for the schools and colleges, or maybe even just as a revision reminder for later. 
this introduction, it's really important that you get your head around what is being asked to do. You cannot just slip into the language devices and try and remain, keep rather all of them in your memory. You need to have the context for which you are studying and you need to think about how you're going to make sure you engage with that key question. How are meanings being shaped in the literature that you are examining?